This is Beekeeper Confidential, a show about the curious lives of bees and their beekeepers. I'm your host, Mandy Shaw. Today's guest is a badass female beekeeper from Miami, Florida. She and her boyfriend first fell in love with bees in 2016 and have since built a successful, full-service beekeeping company. Her enthusiasm and joy for bees is contagious. I really admire beekeepers who take their passion to the next level. I also respect how challenging being a beekeeping entrepreneur can be. Today, we're diving into these issues and more. Joining us from her home in Miami, please welcome Tasha Trujillo. Hello. Hi. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Look at us! I know! <laughs> um, I love your shirt. Oh, thank you. My mom got it for me yesterday. That's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> My mom is always buying me, like, cute, like, honey things you know Aww. things that say honey or bees on it yeah yeah <laughs> I, my collection of honeybee stuff just continues to grow and it's it's up from other people get, getting things for me yeah. <laughs> yeah well I'm so excited to talk to you today and I've been checking out your website and it's amazing thank you so much that means a lot I mean my boyfriend and I, we really worked hard on like our branding and our website and everything. Um, cause yeah, we really wanted it to look nice and we wanted it to look nice for like a, a long time. We didn't want to do anything, you know, kind of like cheap or anything like that. We wanted to like from the beginning invest money into the brand and stuff. Yeah. And it looks really, really good. So we started our business. It looks like at the same time, cause you established Palm Pike Apiaries in 2017. Yeah. What was your transition from, like, what were you doing before you started Palm Pike Apiaries? So, um, believe it or not, I was working for my boyfriend. My boyfriend has a separate business. He has a natural supplement business. And I was working for him um, doing his, like, social media marketing and, like, kind of, like, the creative side uh -huh. to the business. I was the chief creative officer <laughs> of his company <laughs> so um I was actually working for him right after I graduated um college because I knew that I wanted to kind of like do something on my own um but I wasn't sure of what I wanted to do so working for him really gave me the flexibility to kind of you know work you know, for my significant other or like work for family and like still be able to take the time to work on my own thing. Yeah. Um, and believe it or not, we actually started Palm Pike as a t-shirt company. So really? my boyfriend and I, <gasps> so <laughs> from T's to B's, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we started beekeeping in uh, 2016. So Around that time, you know, it was just kind of like a hobby thing. Um, we were still learning at that time. And I wanted to obviously stop working for my boyfriend's company and do my own thing. So I told him, hey, let's start a company together and I'll kind of like do it on my own. And you can kind of still focus on your company. And um, at that point, we said, okay, we can do like a sustainable t-shirt company where we create t-shirts that are made, you know, very eco-friendly and, you know, can represent you know, nature, the outdoors, gardening, bees, anything like that, the things that we love the most. Um, so we kind of started in that direction, but we had just started beekeeping and beekeeping quickly took over our lives. <laughs> I can see and, that. <laughs> and I was kind of like, you know what, let's move Palm Pike from t-shirts, the possibility of t-shirts to bees. And that's kind of what we did in, in two, 2017, I think, no, 2018, I'm not sure. Yeah. 2018, we actually rebranded because, you know, our old logo was like a, a mountain mm -hmm. because the word Palm Pike comes from palm as in palm trees in South Florida and Pike meaning like a mountain. And, you know, that was our logo. Our original logo was like a, a mountain with a P and obviously that's not, has nothing to do with bees. So <laughs> 2018, we did a 
branding, which is the branding that you see now. Yeah. Um, and we've been kind of like, I've been, I've been uh, working on Palm Pike full time for a year and a half now. Wow. And I'm just kind of, you know, trying to do all the things, which is, you know, online content, um, B removals, selling products. Um, and next year, I am actually going to come out with t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> so you just got a big shipping container? So I got kind of acquainted with a local farmer. And she uh, grows vegetables for a local restaurant called uh, Ghee Indian Kitchen. Um, and they're pretty big down here. They have two locations. And she really wants bees. Um, to obviously pollinate her crops, but the restaurant owner also wants, you know, to incorporate honey from his farms into the restaurant. So that's kind of where I come in. And they gave me a section of their farm to kind of put my bee yard and, you know, a little storage unit. So I am so glad <laughs> my, you know, this opportunity, of course, but also my father-in-law, um, Giovanni's father, owns a towing company so he gets these large shipping containers all the time he what? has you know like yeah. so he has you know a bunch of them he has a whole yard full of shipping containers and when you know he kind of found out that we were doing this he said well I can totally give you a 20-foot container and deliver it to you oh my gosh <laughs> so I'm a very blessed person to have him in my life and I'm so thankful for him and yeah, he gave me this awesome 20 foot container that I am currently painting and trying to like, you know, remodel, make it look a little bit prettier than what it is. So I can use it for storage for all of my bee equipment because right now I don't have my own place. I live with my parents. Giovanni lives with his parents. So we kind of have like bee supplies spewed along my parents' house and his house. <laughs> <laughs> gonna bring a little bit of you know uh, <laughs> organization yes <laughs> I think that like early on with my beekeeping I started in, in 2016 too and right away I always felt like it was this constant struggle to keep up with the equipment needs like at the beginning and now I have a very large inventory of hive bodies and yes. yeah like I'll have hive boxes in my kitchen. I've got them strewn all over my backyard and I don't really have like one central place to keep everything. <laughs> I totally hear you. I drive a small two-door Honda Civic. Oh my gosh. It is filled to the brim with honey jars and frames, bee boxes, suits. It's like my, my, my life is so disorganized right now because of all of this bee equipment so you know this shipping container is like a godsend like I'm yeah. so excited wow so how many hives are you keeping so I currently have about 30 okay um I have my old bee yard which is a 40 acre fruit farm in um, what's called the Redlands here in Miami. So um, the Redlands is like the agricultural area of Miami. So that's where a lot of the farmers grow stuff and where a lot of the like ornamental plant nurseries are. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I have half of my hives there on that property. Um, and then the rest of them are in my parents' backyard. <laughs> <laughs> um, it looks like such an amazing setup because I picture it, it's like a really wide alleyway. That's it's literally cake. the side of my parents' house. <laughs> <sighs> but you've loaded it with all these lush plants, and it just looks like a really happy place to be. It is amazing. I have coffee every morning there. I sit in a chair, and I just, like, hang out with the bees and my flowers and all my, all my plants, and I just kind of, like, hang out there. You know, if I'm, like, on the computer all day, I'll, like, take, like, five, ten-minute breaks out in the garden with the bees and stuff because it's just, like, my – I call it my zen area. Yeah, yeah. Are the neighbors on board with all the bees in the <laughs> alleyway? <laughs> so – Thankfully, my parents' house is on a corner lot, so my bees face 
the fence, but on that, like on the other side of that fence is just a street. Oh, that's so good. That's I don't know really like good. a neighbor directly next to the bees, but <laughs> I have had many swarms <laughs> land in my neighbor's yards. <laughs> <laughs> and thankfully they are very, very cool. And, you know, a lot of them are just like fascinated with the bees and they, you know, they'll come over and they'll just start asking me questions. And, you know, if they ever have like an issue or anything like that, they will totally call me and I help them out. Um, so I'm, I'm really lucky to have really cool neighbors who are just honestly fascinated by bees a lot of them don't you know my parents live in like a very like suburban area and um it's, it's called Kendall so Kendall's like the oh an area of Miami that's very um you know like like a typical suburban area like schools houses you know supermarkets not not like the city or anything like that um so a lot of them don't really see that stuff mm -hmm. they're not familiar with it so the fact that it's in my backyard they're kind of like wow I didn't even know that that was possible <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious because it's like different everywhere what are the beekeeping regulations where you live or are there any does the city have any rules in place yes there are so it is overseed by the department of agriculture mm -hmm. um so it's called the florida department of agriculture and consumer services so it's like fda See something like that. Um, <laughs> Some very official sounding yes. acronym. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, you know, it's overseed by the state. So it's not like because I know some people like have different regulations depending on the county. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not like that here in Florida. Everyone has the same regulations. So pretty much, I have to register with them every year, mm -hmm. and a inspector will come and kind of oversee my operation. So they only have to kind of inspect 10% of my hives with me. Oh, wow. Um, and then, you know, they just kind of literally make sure that you know what you're doing um, and that your bees are healthy. So one of the main things that they're obviously looking for is American fowl brood. And they are also trying to make sure that you are requeening your hives that you either catch or that you remove um, because we oh. do have Africanized bees here. Have you had a run in with any of those? Yes. <sighs> Yes. What was that um, like? Scary. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I say scary because a, a lot, and not like super scary because I don't want people to think that Africanized bees are like, you know, what the media plays them out to be, where it's like, you know, you're, you know, being, you know, overcome by like thousands of bees at once. It's not like that. Um, it's just when I go to remove the hive, I see a lot more you know, like aggressive bees that are trying to protect their hive than I would like a regular European hive. Mm -hmm. And and another thing that they do is they'll kind of follow you. So a lot of the Africanized bees, I'll have, you know, like 30 of them on my veil trying to sting me and I will walk away and they will just stick with me. Wow. Which isn't common for, you know, like your regular Western honeybee, European honeybee, you know. They don't um, give up. They don't, yeah. <laughs> um, but for the most part, I mean, I've been doing bee removal for about three years now, um, and I have only come across a handful of very, like, aggressive hives. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so, and that's because I'm literally in their space. I'm literally in their house trying to take apart their home. So, I mean, I understand why they would get aggressive. Yeah. But... You know, it's it's very much amplified with Africanized bees. As a woman in business and a woman in beekeeping, what what are some of the challenges that you face? Like that, that was one of the things that you, when we first started talking with each other, that was something that you really wanted to talk about today. So yeah, let's, definitely, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm gonna say I'm young. I'm fairly young. I'm 28, and when people kind of see me come up, do a beer removal, or at events, or you know anything like that, and I kind of tell them, well, you know, like I'm a beekeeper, I keep bees, or I do beer removal, people kind of like will take a step back and be like what no you don't and I'm like of course I do like that's this is my job this is my career this is what I do but people kind of don't put two and two together because it's not common mm -hmm. so either people will think that I'm just you know someone hired by a male beekeeper 
to run the event or people will assume that I'm just like the assistant or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's very hard for me to kind of deal with because I love what I do and I'm very passionate about it. Um, and I do work really, really hard on it. Like I, you know, I am in this all day long. I have to force myself to take breaks. So when people don't like give me the recognition, I'm kind of like, wow, like, I'm doing this for no reason. <laughs> uh, yeah. The first time that I had somebody make that assumption that I was the helper or that I wasn't like running the show for my business. This is, well, this is before I even started my business. This was early when I was getting into bees and I was trying to get the city to get involved in some more like bee awareness. And cr I wanted to help the city create pollinator gardens. And at the time they didn't have the resources for that, but they connected me with the neighborhood associations because the city has their designated associations. And I went to one of their meetings and I presented to them about keeping native bees and setting up a native bee nesting site awesome. in one of their like neighborhood spaces. And yeah. the president of that group called me a few weeks later and he was looking for a dude, <laughs> even though he had already met me. And like oh, wow. we had talked, he was like, well, this is the number that I have. Is your boyfriend there? <laughs> oh my God. And I, it took a few minutes to convince him that no, it, I was the one that was there and I was the beekeeper and I'm the one that works with bees. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I've briefly done posts on Instagram about this issue and I immediately get like every female beekeeper that I know will be like, um, yeah, I, this is something that I deal with every day of my life. And I just kind of, I, I feel like more we need to talk about it more often yeah. to kind of get it into people's heads. Like, Hey, yes. Okay. This might be a male dominated industry right now, because let's face it. I feel like agriculture in general is very male dominated right now, but there are a lot of up and coming women mm -hmm. going into the industry and we have to give them the respect that they deserve because they are working just as hard as, you know, the, our male counterparts like it's or maybe I, harder I, like I kind of feel like we have to harder, work that yeah. much harder just like is in in any workplace we have to work that much harder to prove ourselves to show that we're just as capable yeah. yeah but yeah a lot of a lot of the the men that I'll speak to will kind of be like oh well uh, you're just like a little garden beekeeper you probably have like two hives you just kind of you know as a hobby it's not a big deal and I'm kind of like well no I actually have 30 hives you know, like people contact me for pollination. I'm not just, you know, a hobby beekeeper. Like this is my business. And yeah, or even worse, which is honestly like th the thing that hurts my heart the most is when people will say, oh, you're just the beekeeper's wife. You're just the beekeeper's daughter. <laughs> and that really like hits me in the heart because my boyfriend is my business partner, even though he doesn't, you know, work with the bees as much as I do because he has, you know, other businesses that he's handling right now. Mm -hmm. But it does hurt me because I work so hard on this and I do this pretty much by myself. He helps me very seldomly when I need him, when I'm doing like a really big job or, you know, I'm doing like a full hive inspection and, and you know, I need someone else there with me. That's when he'll kind of step in. But I've gotten the remark that I'm just a beekeeper's wife or daughter or whatever. And I, I feel like, no, I'm a beekeeper. <laughs> right. Or I'm not just keeping some bees because it's cute. Or I think yeah. they're cute. Like, it's so exactly. much different than that. And... Mm -hmm. For sure. It's hard. I know. <laughs> this is why I really wanted to talk about it. Because it's hard. Yeah. And I, I you know... I posted something and um, Hillary from Girl Next Door Honey, Yeah, she literally told me, she's like, I deal with this all the time. And I just want people to kind of, people who deal with it all the time, I want them to talk about it, to let people know, hey, we're beekeepers too. We are people too. Mm -hmm. Don't just kind of like dismiss me because I'm a female or because, you know, like I have a certain aesthetic to how I do business. Don't dismiss me. You know, I want to be in this table. So accept me and, you know, allow me to put my two cents on the table. Yeah. Yeah. And I almost feel like we have to 
show up more and participate more in beekeeping associations. I just retired from Portland Urban Beekeepers as the president of the association, but while I was president, almost everybody on the board was female. And that okay. gives me hope. I just imagine like this is probably kind of what it was like for women who were wanting to be authors or women who were wanting to be artists I, who were like totally rejected. It's so funny you say that because that's exactly what I was thinking of this morning because I was like prepping my mind. I'm like, okay, I'm going to talk to Amanda about this. <laughs> and that's one of the things that, that came into my mind because I can only imagine the struggles women went through when they first started like, you know, trying to get their own career going because what were women doing before? raising kids. We weren't working. We weren't, you know, doing a career for ourselves. We were just focusing on raising kids, taking care of the home. And it's 2020. Obviously women are not doing that anymore. We are, you know, working, we're doing things. We are in the workforce. And this is an industry now that I guess is a little bit behind. Agriculture is a little <laughs> bit behind now. So we kind of have to catch up because come on. It's How can we make our, our expertise and our awesomeness more visible? Yeah. Yes, sure. <laughs> definitely. And at the same time, I kind of want to inspire other women who have never really maybe pictured themselves in a job or even a hobby. Like even if you've never like thought about, you know, maybe beekeeping or farming or whatever it may be, because it's something that a lot of men do. Like, no, I want to inspire those women to try it. Give it a try because I used to be terrified of bees. I never thought that I would be able to do this. I would never in a million years go near a bee on a flower, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, you know, I, I was working at the Museum of Science and they had this, like, uh, really cool exhibit and it was, like, an observation hive. And I could see inside the hive while I was at work. Like I would have to walk past it to get to my office. And I fell in love with bees. And I was like, oh my God, this is the coolest thing on the face of the earth. A beehive and like, you know, all of the components inside the beehive, how everyone has a job, the queen, the drones, all of that fascinated me. I loved it. And I always thought, no, I that's no, no, I'm not brave enough for that. Like I'm, <laughs> mm -mm, there's no way. But now that I'm in it, I'm like, this is amazing. And I just want women who might be, who might have felt like I did kind of see me and think, no, no, I can do that. Mm -hmm. I can do it too and go for it. Yeah. I think that's the future for, for women is to uplift each other and inspire. Like it doesn't have to be mean girls. We don't have to compete with each other exactly. in a negative way. I think it's just, let's all uplift each other because there's so much negativity in the world. 100%. We can do our part to bring more light and more inspiration, yes. all of that. For sure, yeah. <laughs> Tell me about your first time handling bees. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing that you were scared before, but then you had that observation hive to get to know them. What was it like when you got to work with them for the first time? This is, this is going to be funny. I hope people laugh at me when they hear this because <laughs> the story is hilarious. Um, so the first hive I got was through a friend of my boyfriend's. Um, we met him at our local rock climbing gym. We used to rock climb. And he was a beekeeper. He had like, you know, like six hives and he needed to get rid of one. So he gave it to us. And when we first started beekeeping, we kept bees on the roof the roof of the house. So that's exactly where we were going to put it. And, you know, he came in his pickup truck. He, he handed the hive to my boyfriend. My boyfriend put it on the roof. And then the next day we were like, okay, well, we're going to open them up. My boyfriend and I had not purchased any equipment. We did not have a veil. We did not have jackets, suits, hive tool. We had a smoker. That was it. Wow. Right? <laughs> so here I am, absolutely terrified of bees. But I'm like, no, this is cool. I'm going to go for it. No, I did not go for it. <laughs> My boyfriend opened the hive. I saw all those bees flying all around me, and I ran for the hills. And I was like, I'm not doing this. I went on Amazon, and I bought a full suit with gloves. Yeah. <laughs> and then once I got that, then... I, 
I opened the hype with him. Oh my but yeah, god! That, that very that first experience, I was like, "This is the scariest thing I've ever done." <laughs> but again, that initial like fascination really overcame that fear. Mm-hmm. And once I kind of had my protection, I felt a lot better. Yeah. And yeah, I opened it up, and now um, it's it's crazy. I I feel like every time I open a beehive, I still feel that like initial like, "Wow, this is so." amazing and like the energy that you feel when you open a beehive is something that I can never describe to people and it's just like it's 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 amazing it is the best feeling ever and to this day I still get that feeling when I open up a hive it's like a little dopamine hit <laughs> it is <It's> so fun <laughs> oh yeah wow so I always have a veil on when I'm working with the bees and I almost always have my full suit on but I'm getting to be a little more brave and maybe not, not wearing the same you know the, the full suit every time I think swarm catching I'm most comfortable being less protected just because it's swarms mm-hmm. yeah but I think that I still struggle with that like being afraid of getting stung even though like it happens and it's not a huge deal A hundred percent. I totally understand you. And like, I will kind of like see other beekeepers on Instagram and like how they're like, like no veil, like no gloves. And I'm like, Oh, I wish I could do that. But you know, I'm I'm not there yet. So what I do is I bought a a ventilated jacket. So I'll just wear like the actual jacket with the veil. Mm -hmm. And um, this year I just transitioned from leather gloves to the nitro gloves. Yes. Um, I, for the life of me, am not comfortable with gloveless handling yet. Um, I, I'm trying to get there, yeah. but there's something about being bare skin and handling the frames that the like the fear of getting stung is so much more amplified that way. Yeah, I feel like because you can feel them even if they're just fluttering past your hand, you can that that feeling. Yeah. And for me, I have sort of a like. A startle reflex? I am. The, I have the same reflex, yes. <laughs> I love the nitrile gloves, and I feel like then my hands don't get all sticky, and I can go from yes, one hive to the exactly. next and change them out, but, you know. It's so much easier to, like, handle the frames than, like, the bulky leather gloves. Oh, totally. When I work at the Beekeeping Association's apiary, I get to work with a lot of other beekeepers when I go there and I see people like grabbing frames and their gloves are so big that they're, they're smashing all these bees, but they don't yes. realize it. Um, so with the nitriles, you get so much more dexterity. For sure. It's so much better. It's so much easier. Yeah. Yeah. I love them. I Although love them. I hate when I pull them off and like a gallon of sweat pours out of them. <laughs> like. <laughs> Hands aren't supposed to sweat like that, but it's always just, oh, so gross. I know. <laughs> but I'm only... Imagine me in South uh, Florida. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, here we might be, like, in the 90s and, and not very humid, but you're dealing with way hotter, way more humid temps. Other level. It's hard. What are your strategies to prevent getting heat stroke while you're doing a hive inspection? <laughs> Oh my God, lots of water, <laughs> drink a lot of water and invest in a ventilated suit because I used to use the first suit that I got was that full cotton suit. Don't get those. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. You know, I, I'm very comfortable in my jacket um, and it kind of like, I still wear like jeans or like my overalls to cover my pants fully. Like I don't wear shorts or anything like that. Um mm-hmm. It's just so much cooler not having to be in that full body suit. And, you know, the ventilation in the jacket is very, very cooling. And, yeah, I I just drink a lot of water and I do take, take a lot of breaks. You got to yeah. take breaks yeah. because if not, it's very easy for me to get, like, overheated while I'm out there. Yeah, definitely. It's tough. <laughs> One time I was doing a swarm catch and we were having a pretty bad heat wave and the car thermometer read 107 degrees so it was dangerously hot and these people had a swarm in their tree and I went and I got it this was the year that I like didn't turn down any swarms at all 
I oh, was like, yeah. every B call, I'm doing it. This year, I didn't do that. But yeah. um, I was out there. And when it, ultimately, this swarm was actually, it had two queens. And half of the swarm oh, had oh. already left with one of the queens, probably the mated one. And so that the one that was left was this little virgin queen. And she wasn't, you know, the bees couldn't smell her really well. So I had such a hard time getting them to cooperate. And I'm like, yeah. in my full suit, in the sun. I've got these like rubber boots on and by the time I left, I remember like I looked at my face in the mirror and it was just bright red and I drove yeah. home really fast and I got in a cool shower and I told my husband like, you need to watch me for heat stroke because what I did yeah. is just really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. I've been there. It's really tough and you know, like you said, I, I do the same thing where it's like, I'm going to do Every single bee removal call that I get, I'm going to go for it. I don't care what happens. Yeah, no, you get very tired very quickly. And it's like, okay, I, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. I have to say no. <laughs> How yeah. often are you getting called to do structural removals? Often. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, I mean, I don't know how the laws work where you are, but um, I'm not a licensed contractor. So I can't legally do like a demolition Unless I have like written consent from the homeowner, like, hey, I am responsible for putting this house back together. Um, and this, you know, the beekeeper is not responsible for anything else. She's just responsible for actually removing the hive, the comb and all of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I used to turn them all down. Um, like every single call that I got for a structure, I used to say, no, I can't do it. Um, but this year I started saying yes to a lot of them because – I mean, that's one of the number one calls that I get from people. And a lot of them aren't that bad. Um, you know, like some of them are just like in the soffit of the house. And it's literally just cutting a piece of plywood off mm -hmm. and then, remove, you know, the bees that way. And then the homeowner can just easily put the plywood back. Yeah. Um, I had one a couple of weeks ago where it was in the wall of a house and we actually had to like break some of the wall. But that person had just purchased the house and they were actually remodeling everything. Um, so in reality, I was actually doing them a favor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I try to do as many as I can. Um, and the calls that I can't do myself, I try to pass along to other beekeepers that I know. Yeah. Um, One thing yeah. that makes me really nervous about structural removals and I only have this on my radar because we had to do a remodel recently in our house and we had like water and mold and the guys wouldn't start working until they tested like the drywall and they had to test the linoleum and they were looking for toxic building materials that were used like, yeah. in the 70s. And I think about beekeepers that are going and like actually doing the demo part and I wonder, are they checking for asbestos or lead? I <laughs> don't. I honestly didn't even, like, that didn't even cross my mind. So now I'm going to oh, go no. and, like, write this down <laughs> and, like, literally invest in, like, you know, a mask or something to wear yeah. because I that never even crossed my mind. You know, I really don't do demos like that. But that is totally something that I'm going to do and tell my boyfriend because we've never even considered that. Yeah. It's just kind of so dangerous. Yeah, it is. And then, I, I don't know, I don't think beekeepers – ever get paid what they're worth absolutely not and that's something else that I would love to bring up and I've talked about this a lot and I feel like again beekeepers don't bring this up enough a lot of people assume that beekeepers do removal for free mm -hmm. uh because we're getting bees for free we're getting um, the bees oh and then we're gonna get all that honey too Oh yeah, because oh, yeah. I can totally use that right <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing like I, I, I it's people assume I get calls all the time and I hate to say it, but especially in Miami, um, Miami is a beautiful place filled with beautiful people, but there are also a lot of grimy people who don't really care about you or the bees or anything like that. They just want to do the easiest thing for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll get a lot of calls of people who say, oh, hey, I hear you're a beekeeper and you do bee removal. I have this hive in my house. You know, I'll give them to you. I want to save the bees so, you know, you can have them. And I say, okay, um, 
yeah, I can take them. However, I do charge for beer removal because it is a process. It does require equipment. It does require time. And aside from that, I still have to purchase a hive box to put the bees in. I have to purchase a queen to requeen that hive. I have to take care of them. So in reality, it's still a lot of work for me. And a lot of people who originally said, oh, I want to save the bees. Once they find out there's a cost behind it, they'll say, ah, I'll just throw gasoline on them. I'll set them on fire or I'll just, you know, just throw water on them. I've had people tell me all sorts of things oh when God. they call me originally saying, hey, I want to save bees. Oh, no, wait, now I have to pay you. No, 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 no. I'll take care of it myself. I'll go to Home Depot. I'll get a spray and I'll spray them. I have had people tell me all sorts of things. Wow. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you know, I, I am, I'm trying to save bees, but I also have to eat. I have yeah. to live. I you have can't to, give yourself you know. away. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And really like if, if a homeowner chooses to go that route, like that's on them, that's on their conscience. Exactly. That and moldy that's... comb is going to be in their wall, <laughs> attracting all kinds of disgusting things. That will be on them too. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> When I first started doing beer removal, I and like I would get these calls, I would feel so bad. I even in the beginning, I would do some jobs for free because I was like in my heart, I'm like, I can't have these people kill these bees. Like, I just can't do it. And it gets so tiring, both physically and mentally, that you can't you you need to kind of like put yourself first. And like you said, it's on their conscious, not mine. They are the ones who are going to kill these beautiful insects that are very benef- beneficial to us, not me. So, you know, it, it sucks, but you really do have to kind of put yourself first and kind of think, you know, you're doing your, the best that you can. You are doing amazing work mm-hmm. um, and you're saving the ones that you can, but you can't unfortunately save every single one. <laughs> People don't understand the cost behind keeping bees beekeeping is very expensive people don't realize that and they kind of think like oh you're getting bees I'm saving you money and time and like no 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 no. I still have to buy my hive box which some of them cost over three hundred dollars and then I still have to buy you know here in Florida I have to buy a queen I have to requeen that hive and then the time it takes to actually remove them to take care of them that's a lot of time and money that I'm investing so I, I should be compensated for the work of removing them. Absolutely. And then in the aftercare scenario, if those bees are sick, that puts the rest of your bees at risk. That is the number one thing that I usually tell people who call me because they they think, oh, you're just getting bees for free. Like, no, what if those bees are sick? Then all my hives on my apiary are at risk and I could lose them all because of your one hive. And that's not fair to me. (laughs) (sighs) Oh my God. So I don't, I don't do bee removals as part of my business. I do, I'll do swarm catching and I'll get swarms. I won't charge for that because they're, I just think of them as fun and I like doing it. But people, people have donated money to my business for that. But I am trying to get a liability insurance policy for my business. And I am having a hell of a time finding something that covers what I needed to cover And that isn't costing me, you know, even a hundred dollars a month. That's a lot for a small business to, to Mm -hmm. have for an insurance policy. I don't know what, where are you at with that? Um, so I can't even remember the one that we have. It's very small. It's not anything crazy. Um, I think we pay like a lump sum for the full year. Mm -hmm. Um, but it only covers like a couple thousand dollars. It's not like a huge policy. But I, I have to have that because if I'm doing like a, you know, like an actual business, like a removal out of business, they need to see proof of that. But yeah, there are some policies that are specifically for beekeeping. I've been trying to track one down because the one that I have is just like a, a very small, like small business, like limited liability insurance plan. Mm-hmm. Um but the, I have seen some specifically for beekeepers. It's just weird because I've I've requested quotes from probably a dozen insurance companies, and I've had two, only two, willing to give me a quote. But the quote doesn't cover all the parts that I need it to. Yeah. Because for yeah. for us, our business isn't just we do this one thing. 
Like we're doing hive hosting, we're doing uh, mentorships, we're doing consulting. So, um, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's hard, but kind of like a way around it, um, which is what I do as well on top of this like little small um, plan that I have is um, contracts. So like actual written paperwork saying, hey, I'm doing this for you. You cannot sue me. I cannot sue you. If anyone gets hurt, it's not on me. It's not on you. It's no one. And I have for every single beer removal, I do not work until that is signed. Mm -hmm. Once it is signed and I literally put the amount that that I'm removing. So if it's one hive, two hive, whatever, the, how much it's going to cost the homeowner, the homeowner's name, their address. And in it, I am literally spelling out, hey, I am the owner of this property. I'm not a tenant. I am the owner. Oh, And yeah. I do that because if you're a tenant, like if you don't own the actual property, you're just renting it. You and I have nothing because it's not your house. It's not your property. It's your, you know, that the person who owns it. So I literally have to have that written out to save my butt. Um, and thankfully, you know, I've never had, let me knock on wood. I've never had anything happen to me. Yeah. Um, but I, I think if you're going to do a beer removal or host a hive or anything like that, you need to have those contracts um, just to save yourself um, just in case. Excellent advice. Now, what can we expect from you in 2020? Oh my God, 2020. I am so excited. I am going to come out with merchandise for my brand. Um, I am hopefully going to launch my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> and I am going to try my hardest to expand on my apiary as well as my flower operation. Um, I am focusing on flowers right now, flowers for bouquets and florists. So uh, one of the things that I've noticed is that, especially here in Miami, because we have the port of Miami right here. So it's very easy for us to kind of ship flowers from overseas, um, which isn't that great for the environment and for bees in general. So I want to start uh, a cut flower operation that keeps the bees in mind that keeps pollinators in mind so it's going to be you know something that will help the bees but it'll also help local florists who want to have locally grown organic flowers um so yeah that's that's like my biggest thing for that is going right to be such a huge success how exciting <laughs> i love it well it's been so wonderful to spend time with you and get to know you I, thank you so much. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. This was so much fun. <laughs> All right. Well, have a great day. Enjoy your beekeeping. Thank you. You too. Right. Bye. Bye. If you want to learn more about Tasha and her amazing projects, I'll include links to her website and social media accounts at beekeeperconfidential.com. I want to wish all of you a very happy and prosperous new year. And for those of you who are going to the Honey Love Natural Beekeeping Conference, come say hi to me. I'll be in the vendor area and will also be speaking during one of the breakout sessions. I also want to give a special thank you to our latest patrons, Erica Thompson and Dr. Humberto Boncristiani. Thank you both for becoming patrons of this podcast. And if you want to become a patron too, you can visit us at patreon.com forward slash Mandy Shaw. Until next time, may the buzz be with you. Beekeeper Confidential is a Waggle Works production and it's written and produced by Mandy Shaw.